On this adventure with Look Mew, we are in Cooktown, which is both quirky and steeped in history, and head to Lizard Island. Well, our anchor alarm just went off a few minutes ago. Some touristy stuff off boat. Uh, so, this is the spot where James Cook beached his boat, the Endeavour, in 1770. It took six weeks to fix the Endeavour after coming a cropper on the Great Barrier Reef. 103 years after Captain James Cook repaired his ship, the Endeavour, Cooktown was officially founded. Supporting the nearby gold rush of Palmer River, 200 kilometres to the west, Cooktown's population quickly grew from the 1880s to 1890s, up to 30,000 people came through here, making Cooktown one of the most populated towns in all of Queensland. 30,000 miners had a hell of a thirst, resulting in 47 licensed pubs, many grog shops and a number of brothels, making Cooktown a hell of a place for a bachelor party. This historic town is much sleepier these days, only home to 2,600 odd people, servicing predominantly tourists. There are cool little artworks on these little bridges. This is Captain James Cook's original anchor from the Endeavour which was dropped after striking the Great Barrier Reef on the 11th of June, 1770. We're climbing up to the Grassy Hill Lookout. Pretty lookout, but this is not the top. More to go. The little monument behind me pays homage to the fact this is the first time that Europeans had seen kangaroos. This is the top. That is looking north, and that is looking down the coast to south, and this is a little headland that sticks out. And that's the Endeavour River. And the rest of Cooktown, I'm guessing, are behind us. It's a very small town. Having fulfilled our history quota for the day, we thought we'd take one of the many walks to find some of the beautiful hidden beaches. Well, after a very steep one kilometre descent. This is Cherry Tree one more time, Beach. <laughs> Cherry Tree Beach? Cherry Tree Lookout? Cherry Tree. What a beautiful secluded beach. You just can't swim because of the crocodiles. You can only get here by that path. Beautiful beach. Really nice and obviously very shallow. I would think half a metre would the whole beach be under because it's really flat. So now we are walking to some other lookout. I can't remember his name. Let's go. Who said it was going to be this steep? <sighs> I don't know. Finch Bay lookout. So I'm assuming that's Finch Bay in the background. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a cool little house built right at the end of the bay. Hopefully, no more up. So the gardens were proclaimed in 1878. It's a long time ago. Only 30 of the original species survived. So 
actually really it's a really sweet town and I've googled the top 10 things to do in Cooktown we've had a day out I fear we may have overachieved so top 10 things to do the Cooktown waterfront Fisherman's Wharf we tried up against it tick. Mick the Minor Statue tick the Queen Steps tick the Mibley Wall no the Milby Wall tick Jackie Jack store going there for dinner tonight it's a Thai place now James Cook statue tick James Cook monument tick James Cook museum tick railway building tick Mrs. Watson Mrs. Watson's monument tick the old hospital tick the old bank the powerhouse botanic gardens the cemetery and the Chinese shrine just over there tick the powder magazine building tick grassy hill and lighthouse tick Cooktown Historic Railway Park so we did all the top 10 things that could be 12 actually all today and we're here for a week not sure what we can do tomorrow could be interesting should we just go to Lizard Island tomorrow sure let's go to Lizard tomorrow No problem. On the way to Lizard, we thought we'd get in another cheeky dive. in record time, it's half past one. With an hour to go, it makes a half past two, so it's probably about an hour and a half faster than we thought. Pretty good sail. Managed to avoid, what, four pockets of rain, Jamie? A little chilly though, gotta say. Before long, we were safely anchored down on Lizard Island for the night. Well, our anchor alarm just went off a few minutes ago. So we've just reset the anchor and we're just trying to gauge now whether or not we're still dragging anchor. This is what we're seeing. This is where we started to drag. The anchor alarm went off. So we've just reset here. 
drag back to there, pull tight, and we're still dragging a bit. So we're just going to monitor that for a second. That's our current position. Well, it's fair to say we're not happy, Jan. We're here at Lizard and it's blowing its ass off. And for whatever reason, we can't get this anchor to set, which is unusual for us. So we're tired, we're grumpy. Plan is you've thought you might sit up and watch the anchor for a couple of hours, and then I'll have a bit of a sleep, and then I'll come up and watch the anchor for a couple of hours. Yeah? I, th I think we have to. I think we have to. <coughs> Just stay up and keep an eye on it because we're know, way too close to the reef. If, like speed over ground, over we're getting point two of knots going backwards. We can't keep going backwards and go to sleep and just hope for the best. Yeah, and the reef that we've put the torch on is literally just over there, so we're way yeah. too close. If we drag, yeah, it just get a bit too exciting. You're up first. Yeah. Nice. I'll go to bed. See ya. <laughs> Thanks. Sleep well. <laughs> I'll see you in a few hours. Bye. We've also moved the boat closer after last night's cluster. We have moved from over there in a lot closer to the beach. Hopefully combination of being close to the beach and if we turn around to our right getting some protection from that reef just there should stop it from being rolly we've dug nicely in the sand so hopefully we also don't uh, drag like we did last night just change the filter on the water maker it's very exciting everyone should get the opportunity to do it is the water maker working away and that is our new filter. If you want to see what the uh, old filters look like, they basically just look dirty, a bit slimy really. You can tow them behind your boat to clean them up, which was a tip we got from friends Jack and Mars. Um, but this is what they look like. If you do choose to uh, tow them behind your boat, clean them up, you can reuse them at least one more time. If you haven't seen us make water before, until we turn the pressure up in here until we get it into this sort of just before the red zone now that it's in the, in that pressure zone we are making water to our test tap we normally let that run for five ten minutes just to make sure it's nice and clear then we try it and once it's good then we turn the test tap over and we start filling the tank always the scary bit someone has to taste the water I know there are technical ways of doing it with test kits and stuff, but it's not going to work for us. Try not to sniff it. Uh, so you do have to smell it first, because if it smells bad, don't drink it. Yeah, it smells pretty good. So, it smells good, tastes good. Okay, to pour, and we are making water. And why am I in my Mario Brothers outfit? Well, when we were moving the boat a minute ago, I could hear both the V-belts slipping a little bit, so I'm just going to tighten those. Should only be a 10 minute job per side. Touch wood, famous last words. And then we're good for the day. We can go and uh, do some exploration, which will be nice. Okie dokie. We need size 13, 15 and 17. I am filling in the logbook to document that we have tightened the V-belts on both engines, checked the oil, topped up Starby and changed the filter on the watermaker. And also about what a shit night last night was. Rough and unpleasant Jamie stayed up on Anchor Watch. Poor Jamie. On the next adventure we look at you, after exploring Lizard Island, we head out to the world famous Cod Hole and meet some inquisitive friends. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share it with your friends.